Hey guys, what's going on? This is GT, and you're listening to Dive Bar Comedy Podcast with my host, Wild Joe. Why, why can't you ever say my name? You never say say my name when you introduce me. You always make me say my own name. I thought you would want to say it. Okay, okay. Well, that's me, Wild Joe, GT, my co-host and husband, for those of you who don't know. Uh, we are on episode 38 of our Every Single Wednesday podcast coming out at DiveBarComedy.com, uh, iTunes, Spotify, and all over the web. 38. It's been uh, going for a while now. Yeah, I can't believe it. You know, um, I'm booking the shows. We're, uh, we've been going twice a month, sometimes once a month. And people are people are really interested in performing at my show ever since we started doing this podcast. Yeah, we have this episode coming out today is uh, taped at Liquid Zoo. And uh, th- we have split it into a couple episodes. So the next few are coming from Liquid Zoo where we have an every, uh, the last Thursday of every month. We have a standing date there. So anybody that's in the L.A. area, check it out. It's only $10.00. Liquid Zoo. Uh, what's the address, GT? I forgot. It's in Van Nuys on Sepulveda Boulevard in Van Nuys. And, uh, yeah, Van Nuys is part of the valley, for those of you who don't know, speaking of like uh, valley girls. So, yeah, we've been having a lot of fun in the valley. We did a lot of shows in the valley, and uh, now we're looking for some new venues because some of the places have shut down or changed ownership. Um, or uh, decided to go with bands instead of comedy. So please come to our show, support live comedy. The more people come out, uh, the more places we're going to get booked. So we always love seeing you and uh, saying hello to the people that are listening. It's actually located on 7214 Sepulveda Boulevard in Van Nuys. Thanks for looking that up, GT. You can also look us up uh, online at the... Facebook page is called GT's Comedy Jam, or you can go to GT's Comedy Jam dot com where we post the flyers for every show, which lists all the comics that are going to be performing and uh, the venue, location and address. So um, looking forward to seeing you at one of our shows Uh, for this show. Today, we uh, have a comedy store regular uh, Judy, uh, your friend Judy, GT. What's her last name? Judy, uh, Judy, Judy. It's, like, like it's a very hard name. It's a very hard name, but she's a comedy store regular. You'll hear it. Uh, Mr. C says it correctly. So, uh, sorry about that, Judy. We're we're having a hard time saying your name, but um, yeah, she's a comedy store regular. I heard. Uh, I don't want to gossip, but I heard that uh, she, did she get banned from the comedy store? Or something happened the other day. GT. Judy Chichiato Nisen, C I A N C I O T T O. Uh, I don't know if she's banned. Uh, she said she was banned for some reason. She had a situation with one of the com- uh, regulars, and uh, and uh, she had a situation with Don Barris, and uh, and uh, she's supposedly banned but i don't think so yeah i didn't know they would ban a comedy store regular that doesn't seem right yeah she used to be a regular uh during mitzi shores times but i think um they took her off the list well uh she's still very funny so um i'm glad she got to finally do our show and uh our listeners will enjoy hearing her set and uh, portions of her set and uh her interview on this episode so uh yeah that was awesome that was awesome having her on we also have uh carlos feliciano back on again today and then we have some sets from me and gt we uh we followed each other this week it was uh it was interesting it's always good to follow gt because then when i tell my jokes about my retarded husband people know who i'm talking about and i get i get a much better laugh yeah, I I noticed that you're getting a lot more bigger laughs following me instead of you going up first. So I go up first, 
I make a fool out of myself, and then you go up and really get the laughs, right? Well, yeah, because they can visualize it. You know, like when I just talk about like my retarded husband, they're just like, oh, she's not very nice. But when they know I'm talking about you, then they all are like, oh, I get it now. I, I totally get it. And then that's why I get the big laughs. You know what? I don't really make a fool out of myself. I think I'm very clever. My jokes are funny. People always tell me how great I am. Yeah, you kill. Every time you, you go on stage, uh, according to yourself, you always kill. And uh, you even posted it on Facebook the other day. You had a show at Flappers. You said, I killed. I'm like, wow, that, that's not really very uh, humble of you. But uh, at least you have confidence, GT. Well, for some reason, whenever you're around my shows or doing mics along with me, I seem to have a, like a very subtle set. And uh, whenever... You're not around. I'm fucking killing it. I'm bringing down that the house. I'm blowing the roof off. But whenever you're around, it's just your something about you. It's just like it's very quiet. But I've had really hold on. Your parents were at my sh at one of our shows, and I was doing it. I, I killed it. And guess what? She says the next day, "You did all right." I'm like, what? You know, I think I'm starting to realize you're very competitive. Okay. Well, I just don't like people that brag about themselves. Um, it's not a very good quality. I mean, I guess you kind of have to promote yourself. You can't be too humble. But, um, yeah, you always say you killed. And uh, I listened to the tape that Mr. C posted on Facebook. You got some chuckles here and there. Um, not on every punchline, but on probably half the punchlines, you got like a light chuckle. You got maybe two good laughs. Uh, I, I wouldn't have said, uh, I killed at the end of that. But uh, if it makes you feel good to think you killed, you know, feel good about yourself. Well, I listened to the tape. And um, when I was on stage, I was getting good laughs. I was feeling really good. When I got off the stage, I got two or three compliments. And uh, I felt like I did really, really well. But... Um, so I don't know uh, the tape was I think the tape I want I want the real tape I want the full tape I want the full report when I get the full report I'm gonna check it out with a better sound quality if I really killed or not okay, so you're saying it was a recording issue um, that there were hidden laughs that that just didn't show up on the recording but they showed up in your own head as you were doing your set uh, you heard the laughs when you were there, but for some reason, the recording didn't pick up all these these killing laughs that were going on. No, you got it wrong. I paid $40 at Flappers for my set. I'm going to get the real set, the full set with, with quality recording, not off some uh, uh, dude's iPhone that's recording from the back of the room, and you're judging my set by that, by that, uh, recording. Okay. Well, this should be interesting to see. I'm not saying you had a bad set. You had a good set. I wouldn't go as far as to say you killed. And, and if it were me saying it about myself, because it's pretty tacky to say it that about your own self. But whatever. Um, I almost liked your. Maybe I did like your comment where you said you killed. Then once I listened to the tape, I don't know if I liked that comment on Facebook. I thought about it, but I think I just left it blank. You know what? Maybe I was over exaggerating it by accident. Uh, when out that I listened to the tape, maybe there were certain parts where I wasn't really as getting as stronger laughs as I thought I was, and uh, but when I was on stage, it felt really good. Um, let's let's wait until the full full report comes out. Let's check out the full report when I get the full recording with a better sound quality, and then we'll judge the set by the full report. Now you got into some controversy at Flappers, I heard. You had some controversy at Flappers. You offended uh, certain racial groups. You were talking about Chinese, but somehow you ended up offending black people. Yeah, I was saying uh, I take martial arts, and I was doing my martial arts sounds, and I deal with a lot of Chinese people, so I know I know a few Chinese words, 
And some Chinese, there was one Chinese word that sounds like the N word, and meaning the N word meaning it's here. Uh, this, this. It's like if you say this, this in Chinese means the N word. And, uh, and, because I deal with their noodles, and this, this, um, back means not good. And in Chinese, in Chinese, this, this, it's like the N word. I don't want it's a nigga nigga, nigga nigga um da boom boom wah, and then uh, you know. Is that an actual Chinese quote? If there's anyone Chinese listening to this, please tell me if that's an actual Chinese sentence. Well, what happens is when I said that, they some do a couple of black dudes. They thought I was like saying the N word, which. When they approached me about it, I was like, kind of like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. I was like, caught me off guard because I don't want to go up there and say anything like it's going to offend anyone. But um, I was like saying, dude, I was just talking Chinese words. And uh, if that's offending you, I'll just use another Chinese word next time. But uh, but uh, that's that's what it is. And then what I did, they went to flappers the owner of Flappers, Dave, and then Dave approached me about it. I was like, oh, God, come on, give me a break. But uh, you must have noticed that the very first word of the sentence, although a Chinese word sounds exactly like the N-word, and you repeated it twice, uh, you must have realized that, that you were saying something that sounded exactly like something else. Like It's like if if they put up a Chinese sign that says like some long fuck or something you know you know it's funny because it sounds like something else in english even if in chinese it means something totally different uh at first when i learned the word i sort of sensed i knew it was kind of sounding like the uh, like the n word like in spanish there's but i w- it's something i use it a lot when I'm dealing with Chinese people. For So for me, it wasn't really, I forgot all about it, that it's going to offend black people because I use it with the, when I when I'm communicate with Chinese people. Hold on a second. When I'm, and, but, um, but when I'm, you're up there and you try to find Chinese words to talk about, you just try to remember as much Chinese words and then uh, you don't even know some of those words kind of rhyme in some other language and, and it means something else in some other language and, and some people might think you're saying those words and get offended. So comedy is kind of like, you know, kind of like a slippery slope kind of a business, you know. It's, uh, 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 so so it's, you, you never know what uh, what's going to offend someone. When you're talking in Chinese and, you at, you know, even in Spanish, there's, there's one N word means black. So they use it all the time. And even if you say Arnold Schwarzenegger. That sounds kind of like uh, that could come across kind of like racist too. But if you say, "Hey, you you say the N word," I just said Arnold Schwarzenegger, and oh no, no, you said so. So people people gonna think you're intentionally saying it, but you're not. You know what I mean? I can see that. But I didn't realize you spoke so much Chinese, GT. That that's interesting that you're speaking Chinese on a regular basis. But uh, I, I talk to, I talk to Chinese people every day. Like today, I'm gonna be talking two or three Chinese restaurants. Because that's one of my side hustles. But you actually practice speaking Chinese to them. Yeah, I also know Chinese words. Yamaka hai, meaning fuck your mother or something like that. But I, I didn't say it. I don't say it to Chinese people. But they taught me. Um, they said, don't say it. You're going to offend some Chinese people. So I said, I won't say it. But um, and then but maybe I, sh- I was better off saying that. <laughs> Well, yeah, at least you wouldn't be offending black people, and black people seem to be a lot more vocal about th- being offended than uh, Asians are. You know what? At the improv comedy store, all around the comedy circuits, people constantly, uh, deliberately, not accidentally, deliberately offend Armenians all the time. And if I go around approaching every single person that deliberately offends Armenians... I would be banned from every single comedy club in L.A. uh, If I go around offending every single person who offends Armenians, I would, if I go around approaching everyone, 
that offends Armenians. I would be banned from the comedy clubs. And you would also have not have Mr. C as your host because he uh, uh, always makes fun of you for being Armenian. But anyway, we better get on to our show and uh, hope you guys enjoy it. It was a lot of fun at the Liquid Zoo, and uh, I think it's going to be a fun show to listen to as well. Hey, ladies. You want some hot deals on sexy styles? Check out EverydaySweetheart.com for everyday great deals on cute and sexy outfits. Club wear, mini dresses, leggings, sexy lingerie, and guys, feel free to stop by too and find something hot for the girl of your dreams. That's EverydaySweetheart.com. And for 10% off, use the friend code TAKE10. That's T-A-K-E-1-0. Thanks a lot. Hey, Dive Bar Comedy listeners. It's Wild Joe. I am here with Judy Chanchato. What's up? Hey, I'm so glad to be here at the Wild Bar. At the Wild Bar. What is it called? Uh, with Wild Joe? I'm Wild Joe. We're at the Liquid Zoo. Yeah, they fixed the sign and everything just for us, didn't they? The zoo's a, zoo is pretty wild. The zoo is a pretty wild place. It's a great place to like work out, do your comedy, and I'm so glad to be here with you and GT, the, uh, the Millennium Moms and Dad. I'm, a, I'm actually not a Millennium. I am a, I'm an ex. But I, it sounds like a disease. You know, either you're a baby boomer or a millennial. If you're in between, it's like a disease, you know? But I'm so glad to be here now. I got a little bit of a cold, a little bit of a cold, but I'm working through it. But well, you're working through your pregnancy. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm about to pee my pants right now. I'm always on the verge of peeing my pants. I got a bucket. I got a bucket in the, in the, in the, in the you know, if I'm washing my car, I got a bucket. So let me know. Okay, can I use it on stage? Because what if my water breaks? Oh, I'll, I'll be right there with the bucket. We'll be, okay, do the next show. <laughs> this is the set, this is the punchline. Okay, pee on the punchline. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be like a hardcore if I my water broke on stage? Well, I you know I know how to cut a cord. I've done uh, I've done some pregnancy stuff. Yeah, I know how to do it. I'm wow. Full of shit. I was like, wow. No, GT knew how to cut a cord. GT cut our baby's cord. When did he really? GT. Yeah. Wow. I'm impressed. Uh, GT wasn't really squirmish. He's not really very squirmish about things. Um, the problem with GT in the delivery room is he wanted to film the whole time uh, cl- up, up close vagina shots. Okay, so do you see the uh, the video of a woman giving birth in the car? Um, they're here, they're driving, and they took the baby. The baby came out. She's holding on to her thigh, and they, they make you know slapping its back, you know, to make sure it gets, starts to breathe. But the cord is there, and they're driving. Yes, sir. Wow. Well, GT is interrupting our show. No. No, no, GT's interrupting our show. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Jesus Christ, GT. Your wife is interviewing me. Oh, it's, we're, bo- we're bonding. We're girl bonding. Yeah, what a way to mess up an interview. I know. I don't, I, don't want you get a, I don't want you to get my cold. I don't know how I got a cold. I was so feeling so great. And then yesterday I got the sniffles. I think it was from my husband. You know what? Uh, cold and flu season is coming to an end. So you're. And we were tongue kissing. We never tongue kiss anymore. Right? Really? Yeah, so I think I got a little bit of his. His cold from tongue kissing. Anybody tongue kiss anymore? Does he have a cold or? <laughs> All I know is after I tongue kissed him, I got sick. Just blame him. Yeah, you know what? I blame him for everything. Everything. Everything that goes wrong in my life is his fault. But I, have a great, I can't complain. Everything's going good. We're going on the road. We're going to Oregon, um, Chadwick Comedy Club, and Sacramento. And we we're just at Donnie B's in Illinois. So we're working. We're on the road. Oh, cool. That's good. You book yourself or you have like somebody else booking you? I book myself. I just call them. I have my. Um, I did my first TV appearance with Kathy Griffin. When? Don't, uh, well, in, you know, back in the day when we first started out together. And it's no rhyme or reason. I mean, uh, she had... She actually bombed. I had a great set, but uh, she's funny. But for whatever reason, they go in different directions. You get a manager, you get an agent. and So I'm at, I'm at the Liquid Zoo, and she's annihilated for a while, but she's got her millions, so she's happy. You think she would remember you if you, if you found her, if you ran into her on the street and said, Hey, Kathy. Yeah. yeah, I have, and she's a doll. She's actually a sweetheart. She's not like some of the girls that have gotten to a certain level, a level when they go, Oh, hi, Judy. Like, like, you don't remember when we came up together? No, Kathy Griffin was actually a, a sweetheart when I ran into her. She's like, oh, Judy. And she didn't even know me that well. She just knew me from doing the, sh- the TV show together. That's great. That's great to hear good, positive stories about people. Yeah, actually, I like Kathy Griffin. I don't think, I don't know why they have so much negativity about her. She, I, I don't really, I, I never saw anything like behind the scenes of her being a troublemaker. She just did it in her act. You know, it was an all an act. Wasn't she the one with the, the Trump heads? Yeah, she, she did a fake beheading, you know, of, of him. I mean, come on, it was a fake beheading. He did a real grabbing of vaginas, you know what I mean? And he's president. No, but he didn't really grab it. He just talked about it. 
No, but he actually did. He said he did. No, no, no. It was a hyperbole. And I'm not a Trump supporter, but no, but what he said was, when you are rich, you can do, the women will let you do anything you want. You can grab them by the pussy. It was like a an extreme example of what a woman would let you do. He didn't say, I grabbed their pussy. <gasps> But you don't think he did? I mean, he knows that a woman would let him do it. Didn't I tell you that? I think it's a, just an example. No, I think it, I think it's just like a, an extreme I example. Never thought of it that way. Now, while Joe, you know, um, I still think it was a very uh, haphazard thing to say that would give men or boys growing, you know, coming up thinking, you know, if you're in an elitist situation, guess what you get to do? And there's no repercussions. That's how I took it, even if he didn't do it himself. Well, I, I just have to say in his defense that, that a lot of the women that surround him and that surround these rich men are uh, looking for, you know, they're like gold diggers and they're, they're looking to get something off these guys. And they probably would let him do whatever he wants. And he, maybe he just felt like he has full free reign to do whatever. Whether he used it or not, uh, that was a different conversation. Some women are, you know, a gold digger. I mean, they want to get what they want, and they'll let men do it. But um, the way he presented it and the way he said it to me was saying it's okay. So that's what I took issue with, that he said it, it wasn't like, you know what, that's not what we're about, and men should really think before they do something like that, whether they can or not. So that's what I wanted to hear from him. Even when he became president, I wanted him to say that. He didn't say, you know, that's something I, that's kind of not just foolish, but I want to let men know that's not how we treat women. Yeah, you're right. That would have been a good thing for him to say. Instead, he just said, oh, it's locker room talk. Right. Like, all guys talk like that. And you're, and his wife excused it as, oh, that's just boys talking like boys. But you're right. He should have actually been clear in saying, you know, I was just saying that as a funny example. But, no, that's not appropriate. That's right. And let people, young men come, especially young men up and coming, and with what's going on in other countries right now, and the women and how they're treated. And other, I mean, we really want to keep this country strong on so many levels. And I think that one of the biggest ways giving women that voice and now we have how many women in congress isn't that is that is, that is amazing 300 and something i think women were elected into congress wow that, I, I don't know the numbers but i do know that it's uh it's mostly on the democrat side yep and they're they're vocal they are so vocal it's it's really a lot of fun to hear so i'm excited maybe i'll be in politics next but you never know so i, I have to never know i have to make it in show business first <laughs> And I'm doing it. I'm at the Liquid Zoo. I'm here with you, Wild Joe, pregnant. Oh, they got an awesome band. They're packing up their stuff and moving out. And uh, But they were great. They might make it one day. Maybe they'll pull us all up with them. Yeah, well, you know what? Either we'll pull each other up, too. So uh, th we're going to have a great time. we got uh, we got your babies, and he needs the mic. All right. So thank you so much, Wild Joe. Wild Joe. Anything else you want to give me some advice? Uh, no, no. We just want uh, people to be able to find you online. Uh, where can they find you? Um, I am on at Judy Chinchado, my um, Instagram. I forgot what it was. Okay, I'm on Instagram, Judy Chinchado. How do you spell that? C-I-A-N-C-I-O-T-T-O. -T -T wow. Facebook, Judy Chinchado, Nissen, N-I-S-S-E-N. All right, awesome. Can't wait yeah, to hear your Congratulations, stuff. and I can't wait to, you know, hang out with you. We're going to hang out with you and the kids. Yeah, very cool lady. All righty. Thank you, Judy. Hey, guys, you need a party tent? You need a commercial tent? You need a tent because you have no garage? Well, log on to webtentsale.com, W-E-B-T-E-N-T-S-A-L-E.com, and check out our site. This site is designed for commercial tents, party tents, and anything but camping tents. So if you need a tent because you have a party and you will need to buy it instead of renting it all the time, you're tired of throwing your money down the drain, well, go to our website, webtentsale.com, and check it out and order your tent right now. We actually got one of the wonderful comedians come to this stage, experienced, talented, savvy, been all over LA. I'm sure she has traveled all over the place to make motherfuckers like you laugh. So you gotta get ready. You ready for this comedian? Yeah. Are you ready for this comedian? Yeah. So put your hands together and show some big love for Miss Judy Chinchado! You get a hug! Oh my god, keep it going for your hands. See? Where's number 11 go? Oh, he's at the bar. Okay, I thought he went new, but it's just gas. It's just gas. Don't worry. Get some, uh, get some club soda. Get some bubble, 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 bubble going. Bubble going. And hey, this is a great liquid zoo. Let's have a big round of applause for you guys coming out tonight. I love coming to places 
times like this, it gives me a break. We do only need a break, right? From our families, from our husbands, from politics bullshit. I, no, listen, I need a break from reality shows. I can't even stand one reality show, I don't even watch it. I just hate the, ta- the title of it, Naked and Afraid. Has anybody seen it? It should be called Naked and Stupid. Because the only time you should be naked and afraid is if you're in jail. <laughs> or married. Right. And I've been married a few years now. Naked and afraid, oh my god. Who is married? Happily married, anybody? One fucking person, okay. That would be no one, okay. That's good to know because it's hard, isn't it? Me and my husband are so dysfunctional. We dated for 18 years. Who dated for 18 years? Well, we were drunk for 15, intoxicated. <laughs> But we sobered up, got to the altar, he says, generic, I do, but we got to the altar, we switched it. We got to the altar, we literally looked at each other and went, ugh, you'll do. <laughs> so it's hard being married because being with the same pay- person day in and day out, right? You wake up, one morning I woke up, I'm angry. You wake up in the morning, you don't know why you're angry and you're agitated. He's lying next to me. I'm like, why am I angry? And then I had to think back the night before I went, if I, we had a fight, I would remember. We didn't have a fight, and you know what? We actually had a romantic dinner. Because he does make an attempt, like he's lit candle. And I'm like, and I think we did make love. Because at this point in our marriage, when he does touch me, I black out. <laughs> so I'm like, why am I agitated? And I realized why I was agitated. Because as I'm lying there, he was just, he was breathing. <laughs> on my neck. <laughs> So I set a boundary, right? So my bed space and my air space is to the left. It says, you're to the right, to the right, everything you own and your, no, what is it? What is my Beyonce? To the left, to the left, everything you own, your breath, to the left. Yeah. And he says, I lost my earring. See that? It just fell right out of my ear. I hope, it's, I hope my, I hope my other thing doesn't fall out. It's very easy, you know that. What do they call that when you put in for pregnancy, your age? IUD. What is it called? IUD. Oh, you all know about it. He inserts them. Are you a doctor? Are you a gynecologist? Okay, he's checking. He's practicing. He's a practicing guy. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, because we have a banister here. He can practice here. I doubt it, though, because he's a little too wide. I'm going to be able to. What do you do for a living, sir? Television. I'm television. And what exactly do you do now? You know, with a can of worms. What do you do on television? Well, I'm an actor. Oh, then nothing. Okay, good. <laughs> nothing. No, I say, I figure, like, we're actors, too. I got the light, so I'm going to wrap it up with this. Okay, don't shake it. Makes me all get my tit all hard and everything. Oh, my tits gets hard. So, uh, so what the fuck was I saying about my husband? Oh, okay, so he was saying to me, to the left, to the left, everything I own is expressed to the left. I told him, I set that boundary. You know what he said to me? He goes, You expressing yourself through the words of Beyonce? I said, I can express myself any way I want to. You just don't know about me. You just don't know about me. To the left, to the left, everything you own, your breath. Now, look at that other couple. Look at. How did Beyonce ever get with Jay-Z? He is so fucking ugly. Terminal face. Terminal face. Okay, so what I'm going to leave you with, um, because I, there are perks about uh, putting down marriage, but there are perks to being married. It's so that you can't, there's certain things you can't do when you're married, like you can't, you can't date. And not that I never cheated on my husband. Let me share this with you before I go. I did cheat on my husband. It's his fault, though. Because after 18 years, I dated somebody. You know what I mean? So when he asked me to get married, the guy called me. I said, listen, I have to break up with you. Me and my husband are getting married. He said to me, can we, can we meet for coffee for, just to say goodbye? I went, never do the goodbye, girls. Never go. Because that turned into a, a one time, you know, last time having sex. Now, here I am going into this new marriage. And I'm like, oh, my God. I have this lie. I said, how can I tell him? I have to be honest. So I thought, what's the best opportunity to tell somebody you cheated on them? I'm gonna tell you exactly when. My husband went out, out of town, and we had money problems, so I sent him $600. I sent him $600 to pay the rent. He calls me three weeks later, he goes, Judy, listen, I got something really bad to tell you. I went, oh my God, what happened? He goes, I really go, Judy, sit down. He said, you're gonna be so mad at me. Oh, what did you do, what did you do? He goes, um, I gambled the $600 and lost. I said, oh my God, you're kidding me. I said, guess what I did? <laughs> I fucked somebody the first month we were married. <laughs> and it canceled out. You've been great. Thank you. And enjoy the rest of the show. Back to the sweetheart.
Yeah, I'll never get married. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit twice. You know what I mean? All right, so I got some information for y'all about Jay-Z and Beyonce since you brought it up. Jay-Z, in an interview one day a while back, he said, I met Beyonce for the first time when she was 16, and I knew that day she was going to be my wife. He made, he made an album with him. The tri- you remember the album he made? Best of both worlds. He made an album with him, and that was actually right after the trial, and he still kept making an album. So that's why him and Damon Dash aren't friends anymore. L.A. residents, are you tired of slippery floors? Are you afraid you might slip on your tile? Well, check out tightgripla.com. It's a local business coming out, surveying your floors, and treating it with a non-slip solution, a semi-permanent non-slip solution that will keep your floors safe, whether in the rain outdoors or indoors in the kitchen or bathroom areas that sometimes get wet and very slippery. So if you want safer floors and to not get injured while you're just walking around, check out tightgripla.com. Hey, this is Die Bar Comedy Podcast. We're here on Van Nuys. Actually, we're on Sepal, but uh, what? Sherman Way in Van Nuys? Right across the street from McDonald's. Do you... You love McDonald's, don't you? Uh, that's not really my type of food. But uh, if I needed to come to this corner, it would probably be for gas. There's two gas stations here. I bet you you would eat chicken nuggets if it was like in front of your face right now. Chicken nuggets. How about that? Uh, McDonald's fries uh, are better than uh, than almost anything else I can imagine on the menu. But uh, I don't know. I'm not really a fast food person. Anyway, we're here with Carlos Feliciano. It's our second time on the show. How are you doing? Doing great. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. It's very serious today. Very serious today. Uh, no, I'm not serious. I'm good. I'm. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you. I've just been working all day. Been up since 5, so I'm a little tired. Yeah, this comedy life is hard for people that have to wake up at 5 in the morning. Exactly. Uh, this I'm not meant to for, the, for, the, for work. I'm not meant for the corporate lifestyle. I'm meant to wake up at 12, get out of my bed by 2, eat breakfast by 3, Put on some underwear by four, and by five, think about what I'm going to do for the rest of the day. You should be a stripper. That's a stripper schedule. Yeah, I, I could be. I could be the tidy whitey man. <laughs> GT wants to be a stripper. Oh, yeah. I'm, um, I'm thinking of uh, auditioning for a strip club. Well, good luck. Good luck. Uh. That's the only way I'm going to be able to uh, you know, support the family by stripping. Good luck, GT. Uh, I hope that I don't have to get, you know, supported off of that because uh, we really don't know what your income would be. You know what? Either that or or keep promoting this comedy thing. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it as comedians, and they're gonna pay us millions of dollars, and uh, that's how GT is gonna uh, gonna make all his money. I could I could wonder what type of what type of stripper would he be? Like, what would be his stripper name? What do you think his stripper name would be? I don't know, like a, like a something like a horse or like a like Mustang or something. I don't know. I think it, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think about a name. I don't think it would be a horse. I don't know. I don't bull, know. a bull. No, it would be like a, I don't know, kumquat, Armenian or something like that. I don't know, something like that. Oh, That's a fruit. Cuff. Oh, but you know what Armenians love? love? They love these things called loquat. Loquat, yeah. So he's a loquat kumquat. No, but there's a name. There's a name, an Armenian name for a loquat. Um, Yangi Dunya. Yangi Dunya. Just say it. Yangi Dunya. Yangi Dunya. I, I, you know, yeah, you, you got to go with something, uh, you know, you got to go with something stylish, something ethnic, because if you're going to show up with, like, another guy, they're not going to like that. You got you to gotta be like the, I don't know. You gotta be the Yangi no, Dunya. No, you gotta be like you're the Arme- you're the Armenian and your dick is turkey. You're about to commit a de- genocide or something like that. I don't know. Well, uh, Mr. C always calls you the Armenian assassin. Armenian assassin, exactly. That that that's good. That's good. That's good. Well, well, we'll keep working on it. We're we're gonna work on it how for about, a while. How about Corvette? That's a girl's name. Oh, so is Yangi Dunya. That sounds like a girl's name too. Anyway, we're we're going way off base because this is probably never ever gonna happen. I don't know. I, I think I, I, he has that look in his eye like he wants to do it. There's a great place off San Fernando. It's, I think it's an Armenian run one because I know because the lady, she, she was speaking Armenian, then she didn't want to sell me beer. So I hate that fucking place. How do you not go see some titties and you not see her beer? 
It's against the law. No, 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 no. It's against the law to see titties without beer. That's against the law. Uh, I don't know what, what country you're from, but uh, I'm from America, where you can see titties with beer. Not, no, no, no. They, there's a uh, 18 and over. There, you can be 18 years old and you can go to these clubs. I'm 36, 37. I'm not 18, so I want to see some titties and I want to have a beer in my hands. You gotta go to another country. Okay. Yeah, if it's fully nude, you can't. No, no. See, the thing is that that's what. That's what the South is better for strip clubs, like Atlanta, Miami, especially where I grew up. Oh, it's the best strip clubs ever because it doesn't matter. You're going to have a beer in your hand. And if they don't get fully nude and you don't have a beer, people are probably going to get shot. Well, you know, the truth about California, people think it's this wild party place. But, yeah, everything shuts down at 1.45 a.m. Uh, there's no late nights. It's not like Miami at all. No, it's not. It's a, People have a fucking bug up their ass over here. Everybody's so prudish. And it's like, ugh. We're, we're very hardworking, and we're ready to get up at 5 a.m. That's why we have to go to bed early and get our beauty sleep. Yeah, yeah, that has nothing to do with hardworking, but Jesus Christ, if you're in a strip club, you want to have a drink. I don't know. I don't know who writes these rules, but, you know, uh, there's nobody that's willing to step forward and lobby to get these rules changed. Um, maybe you could take this on, a, a stand outside of Albertsons and, and sign petitions. There should be, a, the women should march for this, like no alcohol for boobies. Like, I think there should be a women's march for this. I think the men should march for this. It yeah, seems we will. We'll, but will you support us as well? Because we're supporting for your boobies. We we're this is going to be. We're going to call it the booby march. All right, all right. The free drunk the drunk booby march. Yeah, free them titties, free them titties, and drink drink at the same time. Drink at the same time. You have to. It's a it's it's un-American not to do that. Otherwise, everybody's going to be sneaking in alcohol using like a flask. It'll be like the bootlegger day. Yeah, yeah. It's basically you want to go back to prohibition. You know, there's going to be you know every everything is just going to be chaos. Yeah, I mean, there's some things that nobody talks about. There's all these presidential elections, all these government elections. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody's saying, oh, let's change the drinking rules in California so people can drink past 2 a.m. You can't even buy a drink at a 7-Eleven after 2 a.m. You can't buy a drink in a grocery store. You can't buy any alcohol at all between 2 to 6 a.m. in well, you California. Know you know where you can get it at? If you go to uh, 8 o'clock Mass at the Catholic Church, you can get some wine. Oh, We'll, we'll keep that trick up our sleeve. All right. So, Carlos, what's going on with your comedy, dude? It's going really well. I already had four shows this month. This is my fourth one. It's going well. Um, I'm going to start submitting for some uh, out-of-town and out-of-state gigs. And if I could get those uh, for March and June, I'd like to start doing that for the summer. Cool. Cool. Well, uh, where can people find you online? They can find me on Tinder. Please swipe right. Swipe right. Uh, my mom says I'm handsome. Thank you. All right. Well, we look forward to hearing your set and uh, checking you out again on GT's Comedy Jam. For sure. Hey, Carlos, thanks for showing up, buddy. Thank you for having me. Bye. Attention all drinkers. Attention all drinkers. Do you like a smooth tasting vodka that goes down with no burn? How about Global Vodka straight from Italy? Check it out. You can find it at global-vodka.com. Not only does it have a smooth, great taste, it also is gluten-free and organic for you health nuts. So try Global Vodka. You can find it at global-vodka.com. Or next time you're in L.A., check it out at Universal Bar and Grill. You guys ready for the next comedian? Yeah! All right. Yeah. That's right. So this next guy comes to the stage. I don't even think his name is his name. This guy is white as fuck. I think he actually stole this name from an immigrant in support of Donald Trump. I think he did. I don't know. I don't believe him. He's probably what I call a, a he's probably just like cause you know America, you know how back in the day like uh, Elizabeth Warren? Oh yeah. We got those five dollar Indians. Yeah. Are there five dollar Latinos? Yeah, they're not. Oh shit. Yeah. 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 Are they from Jalisco provinces yeah. and shit? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go, some Pobodor! That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. But next to me, he will come to the stage. He's gonna rock your balls like you're going through the halls with your mother's face in your hands. You know what I'm saying? So put your hands together and show some love for Mr. Carlos Feliciano. It's a Latino portion. How you guys doing? You guys doing good? All right, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I, okay, okay, yeah. I love, I love America. All right, yeah. I don't talk about it. 
Um, people ask me what type of Latino I am. I say, um, you think of me in like 50 shades of uh, brown. I'm the first shade. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, they also ask me what type of Mexican I am. I'll tell you, I'm a Mexican with a passport. I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They ask me where I stand with the wall. I said, listen, I don't agree with it, but if they build it, I can go right through it. I just show my identification. <laughs> However, my name is Carlos Manuel Feliciano, I'm very Latino, but I look like a Steve. <laughs> so I'll be okay, I'll just turn around and go to Mexico, lo siento, I'm sorry, don't listen to la biblioteca, I'll be right back guys, I'll come and get you, yeah. <laughs> and then I won't. Sorry, you know, I'll just get a burrito somewhere and just be like, hey, remember the time that I was over there? Yeah, that's me. You know what he was saying about his five dollar Latinos? Are there five dollar black people? Yeah, the yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Like the Africans. The Africans? Good. Right. I am from Zamunda. Hello. Yes. Um, what else? The guys? Yeah, so this one lady was asking me, I was talking to somebody, because everybody, when you're Latino, everybody always wants to know where you're from, how, where you came from, how you got here. It's like, how did you get here? My mom's pussy motherfucker was born in New Jersey. <laughs> Come out of here. They're like, and this one guy was being racist, like, go home. God, you see New Jersey? Ew, God, you're a dick. God. But this one lady's like, oh, I love your accent. Where are you from? Like, my family's from Puerto Rico. She looks at me and she goes, Cabo is amazing. Cabo is great, bitch, but it's not here and there. Do you know geography? Do you know geography? But this did happen to me. This one lady looked at me and I said, you know what? You know when you meet somebody with a special kind of stupid that you're wondering, how did you, or how are you here? She looked at me and she goes, I love your accent, where are you from? And I explained to her again, my family's from Puerto Rico. She goes, oh my God, my brother fought in Desert Storm. Oh, wow. 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 I hope he got shot because you know what, you know what? Um, if you're this stupid, I hope he's not this stupid, but you know, tell, tell him thank you for his service. But fuck, man, what can you do? I went out with this white girl. Um, have you guys been out with white girls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm about to tell this story. I don't know how you guys are going to feel about this one. But all right, I went out with this white girl, you know. She's like, I love Latin guys. I'm like, then, did you see this? Like, I don't, I don't know. It, it, am, I, am I like a transition Latin guy? Like, you're going to go with me and you're going to go with Ricky Martin next day? I don't know what the fuck you're doing. You know I'm like, I, I don't know what's going on, but all right. I was like, okay, cool. So all of a sudden, I'm there and I'm trying to live like a loca. I'm trying to do whatever I can, right? So we went back to her place. And you know, you were talking about, about the playlist, right? This bitch puts on Seinfeld. <laughs> you know how hard it is to try to get a hard on by listening to this Hey, Jerry. <laughs> I'm like, hey, bitch, look at this thing. <laughs> like, I, mean, I mean, seriously, I don't know what to do. So all of a sudden, uh, you know, we're making out, the clothes are coming off. I'm trying to go down, you know, go downtown. She's, and, and she goes to me, be a little more, like, say something in Spanish. So my inner door, the explorer comes out like, and then, and then, all of a sudden, I'm like, all right. I'm like, you're feeling very much. I'm like, I'm like, it's my turn now, right? And she's like, Burping and she goes, no, I'm good. So what? <laughs> Hold on, I got me too. That's being me too. Fuck that. I got me too at an emotional level. Then LA, that's being me too. I am. I say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, occasionally, I read, and I was reading that uh, Michael Aventi, which is Stormy Daniels' lawyer, uh, recently cut ties with her, right? And I said, of course he did. I, I said he saw her do stand up. Who wouldn't, right? <laughs> And now that he's being indicted, they asked him, how do you feel? He's like, well, at least I'm not going to see that bitch do stand up, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was, uh, I mean, he, he, he's like, I'll, I'll take prison over seeing that in any, any day. Fuck that. And then I was reading about the tech giant Apple re recently announced that they're going to make the iPhone cheaper. You know what that means for us? We're still going to get an iPhone that doesn't work. <laughs> Right, right. You guys, uh, you guys are like you guys. I don't take you everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. <laughs> it's like every time I show my penis to somebody, they're like, ah! <laughs> Where's the real one? Is it coming? I was like, no, it's more like a travel size. You know, like, you know when you go, you, you go out, it's like a phone size, travel size. Yeah, you know what? Fuck you, all right? She, she's like, I want more. Well, you know what? She, she's like, you know what? I want more. Well, I want more too. But guess what? We're both here at 2 o'clock in the morning. We're eating time, so go fuck yourself, right? <laughs> She's like, I wanted more. Well, I wanted to be an astronaut, but hey. Ah, I don't see that. Let's see. Uh, 
I'll give you the light. Oh, you know what, guys? That's all I wanted to work on. But you guys have been amazing. My name is Calvin Murray from Cal. Follow me on Twitter. All right, I'm there. Hell yeah, that was a great job. Another round of applause for Mr. Carlos Feliciano. I like him. He did it. He did good. You guys like Carlos? Yeah. Yeah, right. He did his thing right there. Man. He did his thing. He got busy. That shit was like rapid fire happiness. It was like bow, joke, bow, joke, bow, 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 bow joke. Oh, oh, good, boys. Good. I like it. I like it. I like it. Hey guys, you need flooring because your floors got messed up during the last party. You need flooring because your dog urinated all over the place and it's all brown and stained and it's buckling and it's warping because of your dog. You were out doing comedy. No one was home. Well, log on to selectflooring.biz. Selectflooring.biz. B-I-Z. And hit them up. Call them up. Say, hey, what your situation is. A bad motherfucking boy. And he's from everywhere and anywhere. It's Mr. GT, the guest of Taco, to follow you. Hey, guys. How you guys doing? Yeah, yeah welcome to GT's Comedy Jam. Yeah. A lot of women's pussies are going dry. <laughs> it's a huge epidemic. What the fuck? What the fuck is going on? It's a huge problem. Not a lot of pussy scientists are saying it's caused by global warming. <laughs> you serious? Yeah. Global warming. So, <laughs> global warming, you know, so cow farts cause global warming. And so, global warming is caused by cow farts, and, 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 and global warming causes dry pussy. <laughs> so, if a girl's pussy stinks, it's caused by cow farts. So next time a girl put up your pussy stinks. So there's a d direct connection. That's correct. <laughs> there's a satellite connection somehow. Yeah. People go, hey GT, do you celebrate St. Patrick's Day or Cinco de Mayo? Since you're Armenian. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know, St. Patrick's Day. I don't know if I'll fit in. <laughs> what about Cinco de Mayo? I don't know. I kind of look Mexican. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I celebrate? Mamacita Day. That's right. That's my holiday, people. Mamacita Day. I would have, pretty soon I would be celebrating my uh, comedy quinceanero, people. Yeah. I'm gonna be having nothing but black strippers. <laughs> Did you guys know, I used to go to Tijuana before I got married, all the time. That was my Disneyland. What the, that was my Disneyland. Wow, check out that ride. I wanna, hey, you done with that ride? Yeah, I found out. I found out that uh, in Tijuana, black strippers are the hottest thing right now because they're all tired of the mamacitas down there. I'm sorry, girls. Comedians tell me, "Hey, GT, do you think people are laughing at you or laughing with you?" Laughing at me? Fuck you, motherfucker! <laughs> Laughing at you. I was like, you know what? You're a fart in the wind. I'm just gonna sit back and watch you go away. That's the that's I get hated on at the comedy circuit. I don't know why. 
Um, what else? Uh, I speak martial arts. I speak martial arts. Now I take Zumba. <laughs> At 24 hour fitness. Guys at the gym be looking at me going, what? You know, the guys who are working out, this guy was just lifting weight, what the fuck? He gay, dog. He gotta be gay, dog. And I'll be like, hey guys, hi. Ah, oh, thank you, thanks for checking me out. I'll be doing my quirky shit. And then I'll be saying to myself, you know what, dude? Be careful who you pretend to be. Because in the end, you're gonna be what you pretend to be. Gang. Yeah. I'll be like doing my Zumba moves in front of my wife. She'd be like, you look funny. Every time you dance, you look funny. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for coming to GT's Comedy Jam. We got another comic coming up right now. She's a very lovely lady. She goes by her name, Wild Joe. <laughs> Watch out, people. I might go into labor. <laughs> you see a puddle, it's not pee, don't worry. <laughs> no, it's a fun time to be pregnant. It's a fun time to be pregnant because I am actually pregnant at the same time as Meghan Merkel. Yeah, same due date. Uh, her baby may inherit the throne one day. My baby may inherit nearsightedness. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, uh, GT is the lucky dad. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we already have a baby at home. Uh, he's a pretty good dad. He changes a lot of diapers. Um, and you wouldn't believe how much this baby shit. For something so small to have so much coming out is crazy. <laughs> but uh, that's one of, the, one of the grossest parts of having a baby. Um, but yeah, GT steps in, changes all the diapers. Only problem is, he refers to the baby's private parts as her pussy. <laughs> a little disturbing. But I want to cut the slack. Because, uh, like you said, the only time he's ever seen female genitalia before was in a seal on the whorehouse. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised he's not calling it Pinocha. <laughs> yeah, that's cool that I get. But, uh, <laughs> no. It's crazy being pregnant. Uh, there's all these weird pregnancy symptoms you don't think about. It's like there's a lot going on, not just the baby. It's like intestines rumbling and stomach getting squished up to here. I mean, who would think that eight months of indigestion would be the miracle of life, <laughs> right? The worst is the gas. I'll, I'll admit it. The worst is the gas. I um, have been letting off some real stink bombs. But I found a solution. You guys can look this up online. There's this fart filtering underwear called Shreddy. You put it on, it has like a carbon filter in the butt area. So you can just fart away. Wow. Yes. And it kills like 
95% of the smell. I think I may have gotten a little overconfident with these treadies, though. <laughs> so I was uh, in my day job working in my cubicle, just farting away. <laughs> is the right in the middle of a crowd because nobody knows who did it. So when you're in your cubicle, that's your space, your private space. And then my boss comes over to show me something, go come over my shoulder to show me something and walks right into the fart pocket. <laughs> All of a sudden, she offers me maternity leave. I mean, where did you get that? You know? I'm like, I'm only four months pregnant. She's like, just go, go now. I didn't get maternity leave. Who are we talking about here? You know? No. Um, but yeah, it's, it's crazy. There's all these apps where you can track the size of your baby as it grows. They always compare it to fruit. Like, your baby's the size of a poppy seed. Your baby's the size of a blueberry. Your baby's the size of a leech. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, you need to give your nutrients to the baby. But the fact is, this is not a joke, this is a fact. The baby gets all the nutrients first. So those prenatal vitamins are for yourself to not lose your teeth in your hair. You know, it, it's, it's me that needs the vitamins, not the baby. The baby will live. The baby is like a, it's like a first, I don't know, it's a, it's a parasite. It's, it gets first dibs on everything, you know? So, anyway. That's crazy. And then the baby comes out. I heard this story. My friend told me this story. Uh, somebody gave birth to their baby, didn't want it, threw it in a bush. <laughs> right? <laughs> this person has never been to a hospital ward, like a maternity ward, obviously. Not only they gave birth at home, but the other evidence is they don't know. These little things can cry and scream their head off. This baby screamed so loud, the neighbors came over and, and the baby saved its own life. You know? so just so you know, uh, these things are not as helpless as they seem here. Very, very loud. They don't even need this microphone. If I brought my baby on stage right now, she wouldn't even need this microphone. She would be loud enough to hear out the door, you know? So. But they're cute. They're cute. Um, yeah. I take my baby to a party hand her to one person. Next thing you know, she's getting passed around the room. Everybody wants to hold her. Yeah. Yeah, it's like bringing a bag of cocaine to a party. <laughs> <laughs> Never comes back in the same condition. <laughs> they always bring her back when she's crying. I'm like, take her when she's crying. Bring her back when she's happy. Because uh, they ask the same dumb question. Why is she crying? Why is she crying? I'm like, uh, I guess she doesn't like you. <laughs> uh, people really care. People really care. They really want the baby to like them. You know? Everybody loves that baby. Nobody cares about me. I post a picture on social media of the baby. It gets like three times more likes than, than one of me. So you guys can follow me at Wild Joe Comedy. It's all pictures of the baby now. I'm using her to uh, increase my social media presence. <laughs> but, uh, the only problem is uh, nothing makes your skin look worse than taking every single picture next to a newborn baby. <laughs> worse than bad lighting. It's really horrible. Really horrible. But, uh, no. It's hard. It's hard. It's going to be even harder. I can't believe another one is coming. I mean, I already hardly ever get laid as is. I mean, I have a full-time permanent cock blocker. Literally. <laughs> Yeah, I used to fuck so much. I used to, I did, you know. I enjoyed it, I, I'm not gonna lie, I enjoyed it. And uh, I even had a playlist. Any of you guys have any favorite music that you like to listen to? Royce the Man, Chase Eyes. All right, all right. Metallica. <laughs> 
Thanks for listening to Dive Bar Comedy. That is our show for this week. Stay tuned every week and uh, subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you can find us on the web, divebarcomedy.com. Thanks a lot. I'm Wild Joe. And this is GT.